Good Saturday evening, everybody. Welcome to the Bobcast. Sorry, we're a little bit late. I had a technical issue with some, I could, they couldn't hear me or I couldn't hear them. So we had to go back and change microphones. Welcome to Saturday night at the Bobcast. I'm your host, Bob Mercer. With me always is your host, Rick Sawyer over in the Murphytown Circle. Evening, sir. I and over on, the north, over on the north end of the Berg in our own little corner of the world, we have T. Hi, T. That's you. Hey, I'm good talk- evening. I'm talking to you. That's she, to she's running on, on three second delay. Is that right? Well, we're on a what? We're on a 39 minute delay, so I think we're good. Yeah, hey, listen, cool. everybody, we got a really good show tonight. We got, <laughs> we got, that's just going to make me laugh. We got somebody that's going to, that I, I believe that you're going to find very, very interesting. Mr. Derek Evans, he's running for first district in the Congress for his state of West Virginia. Um, and we've been looking forward to this because his, um, I'm assuming, I'm not sure, is it your, uh, your manager or something? The one we've been talking to? Uh, yeah, Miss Lisa, my, my comms director, yeah. <laughs> Her and I sit and talk for the longest time, and I'm sitting there thinking, oh, we've got to hurry up and have this guy on because this is just amazing. So anyway, um, I, like I said, welcome. I uh, apologize for being a little bit late there. It's Rick's fault, like always. And, always. Uh, so what we're going to do tonight is we're going to let Derek Evans introduce himself, tell us a little bit about himself, and kind of give us a little bit of a background. And if you all have any questions or anything, you know how to do it. Send them to us by Facebook. Send us to them on Restream. Um, apparently, we are we are supposed to be live on YouTube now. Thank God. And um, Instagram, but Instagram sent a message said they're having issues on their end. So I'm not sure what the in, what Instagram is going to do right now. So we'll see what that happens. But we are live on Facebook. We are live on uh, YouTube. And after this, we will the audio version will be available, as you know, on every single uh, podcast site that there is. So without further ado, because I know this is a busy man out here and uh, I'll be tell you. I talked to uh, I talked to Roger Conley today, Derek, your buddy, and he sent me a message and he said, I 100 percent without a doubt support this guy. And, you know, everybody's like, well, once you have an interview with him, you, you, you're going to love this interview. And I'm like, okay, I, I'm excited. Let's do it. So introduce yourself, sir. Tell us a little bit about you, what you're doing, what you're running for, and go from there. Thank you. Uh, well, first, of yours. well, first of all, thank you guys for having me on the show. I, I really appreciate it. And Roger's amazing. Hopefully he didn't set the bar too high for me. But, uh, you know, Roger, as we know, is running for county commissioner there in Wood County. Really hope he gets elected. He has my yes. full support and endorsement there as well. But uh, you awesome. know, my name is Derek Evans. I'm uh, married to my college sweetheart. We've been together for about 15 years, and uh, the Lord's blessed us with four beautiful children. And um, in 2020, I was elected to the West Virginia State House. I was the first Republican to win my district in over 98 years. I won in a landslide victory. And then uh, on January 6th, I went to the Capitol to peacefully and patriotically uh, exercise my natural God-given rights of free speech. And I was completely 100 percent peaceful non-violent non-destructive didn't see any of those things take place that day i was on the east side of the building and everything i'm getting ready to tell you can be verified on video people can watch it for themselves i i walked through an open set of doors i thanked a police officer for his service he gives me a friendly fist bump inviting me into the building i spent less than 10 minutes inside the public rotunda area where i'm heard on video uh chanting freedom and then i remind everyone to be peaceful don't destroy anything no destruction of property I think the police officer again walked out the same set of doors I entered and ultimately the uh, the same deep state that's going after President Trump came to my house. They ripped me away from my wife and my four young children and threw me in prison and held me hostage as a January 6th political prisoner. And then been out been out for a little over a year or so now had a had a 18 month legal battle. I did three months in federal prison. I did eight days of that in solitary confinement because I refused the uh, the jab while they were holding me hostage. And uh, so now I'm running for Congress in, uh, in, in the southern half of West Virginia, if you want to kind of lead us to where we're at now. OK, well, um, we, we also have a uh, you and I also have a mutual friend, I believe. I believe, you know, the gentleman, Eric Barber. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah Eric. I, 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 served on, I served on council with him. I'm still a councilman, but I I, uh, I served on council with Eric and 
Eric calls me all the time and him and I talk about different things. Yeah. It's just, I told him you were coming on. He said, really? And I said, yep. I said, he's coming on. He goes, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, your comm director kind of told me some, you know, kind of filled me in on some stuff, which just after I sit and thought about it, I was rather furious about the whole, I, I have been anyway, because they're totally taking something that we are allowed to do. Some people messed up. I'm sure I don't, I wasn't there. I was supposed to be, I'm going to tell you that straight up, but I had to go to work the next morning. So I couldn't go. They asked me, they wanted me to come in to work. Eric asked me to go with him or I'd have been there too. So, but it's, you know, we just want to hear, you know, your, your thoughts about uh, what's going on, what you, what you plan. If you know, when you get into Congress, what you would like to see happen, what you want to do. And then, Teresa always has T always has questions. So I know she will. And then if Rick has anything he wants to say, you know, if you don't mind, we'd like to just kind of act, ask as we go along, because this is intriguing. I've, the only person other than Eric, you're the only person other than Eric I've talked to about January 6th and just watching it on uh, Fox News and all of them. It, it, it's just it, it just absolutely blows my mind how they handled it. So uh, when you, you know, it's the Southern district and who are you running against, sir? I'm sorry. I, uh, I'm, Carol I, Miller is the incumbent yeah, right now. Yeah. yeah you, t you told me that. I remember that. You, well, you mentioned it here. Yeah. So what's, what's your plans? What do you think? I mean, what's going on that really needs to be dealt with immediately, if not sooner. Um, and um, okay, Rick, that's good. There you go. There we Let's go. do that. Let's do that. All right. So, so kind of give us an idea of your, of what you, what you want to do, what your goals are, what you think needs, you know, what you think. I mean, I'm going to tell you straight up, sir, our country is in a world of hurts. Yes, it is. We are absolutely struggling from end to end. And the only thing we get was things are great. They've never been better. I've, I've done better than any president in the history of America. And we're like, okay. So, if you would just kind of give us an idea of where you're headed, what you're going to do, what you think, we'd be appreciative. Well, first, I want to let you guys know I'm, I'm an open book. People can ask me any question they want, and I, I won't shy away from it. And, um, I'll answer anything. Uh, but in terms of, I mean, look, uh, I'll definitely want to get into some of the, the policy issues that I want to do. But I, I want to make it clear, you know, a lot of politicians make promises they can't keep. I'd be one of 435 people in the house. And so I, I'm going to be more than happy to share some of the ideas and the things I want to do. But I can't make anybody else uh, vote for, for some of these things. But uh, the one promise I make to the people of Southern West Virginia that I always say, because I don't need anyone's help to do it, is I'm not running to make friends. I'm not running to, to, to go to D.C., sit in the country club, sipping tea, playing patty cake politics uh, with the left. I'm running for one reason, and that's to kick in the front door and expose the corruption in D.C., and I don't need anyone's help to do that. So that's the one absolute promise that I'll, I will make to the people of uh, Southern West Virginia. In terms of you know some policies, obviously uh, our southern border is being invaded right now, and I think that we need to – to 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 offer up a resolution it doesn't really do do anything up front i think we just need to make it on the record make it very clear that we are being invaded right now so that's the first thing i would do is make a proposal and propose some you know uh, a resolution that says simply put our, our we're being invaded right now on our southern border after we get that on the books now we can go back and try to do some things to fix it and anybody who votes against that you can see you just voted and agreed that we are being invaded i believe we need to after declaring an invasion, we need to send in the military, send in the National Guard, secure our border by any means necessary. Without uh, without borders, we don't have a country. Uh, then obviously inflation is a major issue right now in this country. And I think that goes hand in hand with uh, unleashing American energy. West Virginia is an energy producing state. We need to unleash American energy. That would get a lot of people back to work, lower the cost of goods, lower the cost of production, those sorts of things. It would help with inflation, interest rates, uh, all of that. And then the other big issue is, is truly the weaponization of government. And I'm not just saying that because of what I went through uh, myself, but, you know, Congressman Jim Jordan put out a tweet, I don't know, two to three weeks ago now that uh, basically anyone who shopped at Dick's Sporting Goods, the government took, took your information, and put you on a list. Anyone who purchased a Bible. So if you used a debit card or a credit card and purchased a Bible, you've been placed on a list and the government is watching you and tracking you and surveilling you. This is a major problem in this country right now. And I think that my unique experience of after everything I've went through surrounding January 6th, it's something I can bring to the table 
Uh, because the thing is, what they did to myself and the other January 6th political prisoners, they were attempting to use us as examples to put fear into the American people. They wanted to say, hey, either sit, either accept the tyranny that you're living under, sit down and shut up, or this is what's going to happen to you. And so we're in a battle for the future of this country right now, and we need people who are willing to stand up and fight back. We have too many politicians in politics. We need to get more patriots involved in politics. You know, I, I, I'm not sure what... And I asked some of the other guests we've had on before. I, I, I don't understand what their end game is. I, I, I mean, and, and every question, every time I ask that question, it's the same answer. Power. Power over what? I mean, our country is being destroyed right in front of us. Well, and, uh, they, they can't roll out their, their globalist agenda, their one world government. They can't roll that out as long as America is still standing. We're the one things standing between them and their one world agenda. And so that's why they're purposely trying to destroy our country from within, because if they can make America collapse in any way, you got to think how, how, how terrible it would be expensive and, and just finance, you know, financially and just um, the cost of life or whatever in, in order to invade our country and attempt to take it over. I, I don't know that any country could, could do that or any entity could do that. But what they can do is they can start a cultural civil war, which is what we have going on in our country right now. And they can throw in the, all the ingredients that are necessary to destroy our country and destabilize our country from within. And that's what you're seeing taking place right now. That, that's that's just absolutely very amazing for me because, I mean, we can't even, except for, except for a whole, you know, like the Republicans and I know Greg Abbott, you know, he he said, you know, hey, this is my state. I have to take care of my people. And now they're threatening to federalize his National Guard. And I. I it is an absolute invasion. It's an absolute. I, I don't know if or how many at all we have illegal immigrants in West Virginia. I, I don't know this. I don't know the answer to that. Nobody I, does. Anybody's trying to tell you they know the numbers, they're they're lying to all of us. Nobody knows. There's so many that's come across our border now. And and I've talked to um, I don't know if you know Scott Heckert. He's a delegate. Scott okay, Heckert. Yeah. yeah, Scott's yep. a delegate. Good friend of mine. And I talk to him about this all the time. I'm like, you know, we need to take care of West Virginia first. West Virginia's got to come first. We got to put a stop to everything that we can legally. Um you know, and every day you watch thousands and thousands of people come in. Nobody knows who comes in. We had what three police officers in New York beaten by immigrants. They took them, they arrested them, gave them a no bail, no bail out the door. They went and they, they, they left town. Well, they flipped off the media on their way out. I saw that. <laughs> I saw man. I was like, Oh, I, I was like, Oh, are you serious? Are you serious right now? And it's just, it's absolutely crazy that the current administration is not acknowledging that we're being invaded. Yep. How, how, how many people that they don't even know, the Godaways, the Godaways, that they don't even know, and they don't even know where they came from. And they arrested one guy yesterday who's been arrested four more, four times already. And uh, hello, Rick Green. I'm sorry, we're starting to get people popping on. So, you know, I, I, every time that we get somebody in an office, it's like, and, and I had, I, I Jim, Jim Jordan, I think, is, is the bomb. I'm sorry. I, I think he's the best. He's one of the best. And, but they, they just seem to be sitting back, Derek, and saying, okay. All right. Well, you know, let's see what happens. But then they come and they say, well, you know, we're doing this, 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 and this, and this. I've been a Republican all my life and I, I'll die a Republican. And I, I'm so fed up with things. That's where, um, and, and what's, what's your communication? I just a great Lisa, lady. Lisa, we talked and we laughed and she goes, Oh my gosh, this is going to be a great interview with you and Derek. I'm like, well, you know, I pretty much got the same idea. I pretty much got the same ideology that you do. You know, it's time to stop. Our kids, is, we're, we're, we are destroying 
I'm sorry, I don't mean to be taking the spotlight from you. I apologize. No, you're good, man. It's your show, brother. <laughs> I, I'm on a bit of a soapbox here. You know, they <laughs> shut up, Rick. You go, Bob. Go get him. You go, squirrel. <laughs> Shiny thing. <laughs> so, you know, with what's happening now, our children's future and our children's American dream is being taken away from them a little bit at a time and it's being done in a way that we cannot stop it it seems like you wake up every day with something new well they did this why you know um but i mean you know I, th there's just so much that you you and i could sit and talk forever i'm telling you and but go ahead and finish what you were doing and uh, you know if we have any more I'm, i apologize I do. I, I get so fired up about this stuff that I, I don't even know what to do anymore. So go ahead, sir. I apologize. No, you're fine. But I mean, it, it really comes down to, in my opinion, we, we have too many politicians in politics. They want to sit around. They want to talk this big game. They want to send out fundraising emails. They want to, their biggest concern is how do they get reelected as opposed to the biggest concern is how do we save this country? I, I would, I could care less about getting reelected if it means that we save our country in the process. But I think a lot of those people would choose reelection over fixing some of these issues. And so they, they, they're, they're cowards at the end of the day. I mean, that's just, that's the nicest way of saying it. That's, that's where we're at right now. And that's why we need to get more patriots involved in politics. People who are frustrated, people who are running because uh, they, we don't have a seat at the table. And um, that's, that's what needs to happen. Exactly. And, you know, you hear every day, well, you know, everything's going so well, guys. I, I don't know what you guys want. We, we've got the best, yeah, the best economy ever in this entire history of their great nation. No, you know, and it, it just, it, it's just a constant barrage. And you honest to God really don't know where to, who to believe. When I don't believe them. any of them. I don't believe any. I, mean, I do I not mean, believe or trust any of them. And, you know, that's that really goes back to a very, very important aspect, I think, in the current state of our country is I think that there's a big divide. There's those of us who are conservative and whether you're Republican or Democrat, I'm going to throw that to the side because I think there's a lot of liberal Republicans these days. But those of us who are conservative. You know, I know that we have natural God given rights and the Constitution was written to prevent the government from, um, you know, infringing on those natural God given rights. There's exactly. another group of people who believe that our rights come from the government and those people, they believe they look to the government for safety. They look to the government for protection. They look to the government to employ them, to house them, to feed them, to solve all their problems. And I think that that's a big divide in our country right now. We got to get back to the American people, not only having the ideology, but the ability through individual liberty to provide for themselves and get off the tit of the government in whatever aspect that may look like. The federal government, by all intents and purposes, is supposed to have very, very limited power. Most of the issues in our country is because the federal government is way too big. I'm a proponent of not only defunding, but abolishing all of these three letter agencies, getting rid of them, returning that power back to the states, back to the local communities, back to you and me and we the people where there's some accountability <clears throat> in place as opposed to these unelected bureaucrats who are running our country behind the scenes. But I think I think we got to get get the federal government in its place. And that should be the main goal in terms of uh, trying to save this country is getting the federal government back. Like one of the very few limited powers of the government, for instance, is securing our border. So they're, they're, there's very few things they're supposed to be doing. They're over doing all these other things, pushing their ideology onto the states, onto the uh, onto we the people, while not doing one of the few things that they're supposed to do. Right, and 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 in and, and that aspect of it, there's there's no repercussions for them. They right. swore when when they be, when they took office. And that, you know, they would they would uh, defend the Constitution of the United States of America from all enemies, foreign and domestic. No, they're not. No, they are absolutely not doing that. And that is sad because right now we, we got all these people coming in. Nobody knows. What are we supposed to do? I mean, well, Bob, we have we have Congresswomen. We have um, Ilhan, Ilhan, Ilhan Omar, who is openly pledging allegiance to a foreign 
entity to another group while being a sitting U.S. congresswoman. They kicked out George Santos out of, they expelled him out of Congress, but yet they have not done anything to expel Omar from Congress after what the things that she said. I'm sorry, but if you're a U.S. congressperson and you're out here, you know, giving praise and swearing allegiance to, to another group, that, that should be automatic grounds for dismissal from being a, a sitting member of Congress. Absolutely. Uh, oh, wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to get. So it's it's actually very infuriating, as a matter of fact. Yes, it is. It really Do you is. Have any questions for Derek that you'd like to ask? I know we've been running our yappers, but I, I have. I'll Do you have anything you want to say, Kate? Yeah. Am I still on here? Okay. Yes. Yes, we can hear. <laughs> okay, because it says I lost connection again. Okay. You, yeah. you did, but you came Derek, back. So you were talking about the January 6th. Okay. Okay, Derek, you were talking about the January 6th and how this personally affected you and your family. And... Um, more than anything, more than a question, I kind of have a statement about that. Um, I think the government is overstepping their bounds by saying that one group of people on January 6th who is having a peaceful protest are doing things against the law, while people that are out here rioting and burning buildings and shooting at police they're the peaceful protesters. And I don't see where our country is getting the two confused and why um, it seems that um, one group is being, um, yes. there, there's a witch hunt after one group, but yet another group, everything is fine. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, have we, have a, we, have a, we have a two-tier justice system in this country right now, and it's uh, it's not just the the justice system; it's even the media who's controlled by the left, who's pushing this false narrative. And it really, it all comes down to their hatred of President Trump. Um, that's what it comes down to. Exactly. Uh, the people who were out burning down half the country and everything, it was um, you know in the name of the left and, and anti-Trump, if you will. And that, so that was okay to do that. But uh, a 70 year old grandma who was standing on the Capitol grass on January 6th, well, because she was there in support of President Trump, that the, the government and the media believes that they, that person should have their lives ruined. And, uh, you know, it goes so much further than just getting arrested and thrown in prison. Uh, I mean, most, uh, most of us involved in January 6th have been debanked. We can't get a bank account at any major banking institution. We can't get credit cards. We can't get loans. We can't get jobs. Uh, I'm on the quiet, I've been on the quiet skies list, which is quad S, which is the highest classification you can have and still fly on an airplane. The banks, the airlines, all these major companies, cell phones, uh, companies, they all turned over all of this data to the government for them to turn around and start, uh, investigating and surveilling American citizens via the Patriot Act, which is absolutely unconstitutional what they're doing. They've weaponized all this, just like the quiet skies was intended for uh, international terrorists who are flying into the country. And they turned around and weaponized that against um, American citizens such as myself and so many others. And so, yeah, we have some major issues in this country right now. If people truly understood how weaponized the government is against the American people at this point, I think that the people would be absolutely shocked. I mean, they, the, the banks turned over the, 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 the government requested and the banks complied and gave them all the financial information for people who were in and around the DC area surrounding, uh, you know, like the January 5th through the 8th, 8th or whatever. And so some of these people didn't even go to the Capitol. There was, there was one person who was there for a funeral, there was another person who was there for a job interview. I would imagine they're uh, they're probably left left leaning even after talking to them or were at one point, and they were placed on the quiet skies quad S list just because they made a financial uh, transaction in uh, in in and around D.C. on January sixth, seventh, eighth, somewhere in that time frame. So that's how broad this is in terms of what the government is doing, and it's unconstitutional. And the American people need to actually stand up and put a stop to this now while we still can. Got a so, question. Now that, you're a now that you're a convicted felon, what happened to your Second Amendment rights? 
Oh, I don't have – well, I'm still on probation, so it's even worse. I can't even have a slingshot while I'm on probation. I can't yeah. even have – forget a bow and arrow. I can't even have a knock for an arrow. I can't have anything while I'm on probation for the next two years. This is absolutely insane. It's absolutely – ridiculous what this government is doing to the American people. So uh, you don't have to answer this. How, how did it affect your kids? I mean, I was yeah. told that they waited till your wife went to work or something. Yeah. So they, on January 8th, uh, when the two days after January 6th, when the FBI raided my home, they knew, they told me, they, they told me themselves that they had been surveilling my home throughout the day. They knew my wife left. They knew I was home alone with my, with my children. I have four children at the time. My oldest was five years old. I saw them come up the driveway. I didn't know what else to do. I grabbed a tablet, put my kids in the back bedroom where I thought they'd be the most safe and said, here, play on this tablet while daddy talks to his friends. Cause I wanted to protect them not only physically, but emotionally as well. The right. hardest moment of that entire day was when I was cuffed sitting in the back of the SUV the, you know, the windows are tinted. The kids couldn't see me, but I can see out and we have a big window in our living room. And my little girls were standing in the, in the window crying, wanting to know where, where daddy was at. And that was uh, absolutely gut wrenching. And so, yeah, uh, my, not just myself, every January 6th uh, prisoner and family member that I've spoken to has definitely went through a, a, an emotional uh, trauma, if you will, uh, from that. I mean, and I'm lucky now what they're doing on some of these people is they are. This is not hyperbole. This is not an exaggeration. They are literally rolling into small communities with military tanks. They are taking battering rams and knocking doors down at 5 a.m., throwing flashbangs into the home, flying drones into the home and going in with guns drawn and holding women and children at gunpoint, making that you know, seven year old children lay on the ground with a, you know, holding a gun to them while they come in and arrest the person for misdemeanor trespassing charges surrounding January 6. This is insane what's going on right now in terms of how they are, how they have been weaponized. It's infuriating. Sounds like Along the with- stop to me. Yeah. yeah, exactly what it sounds like. And, and it's it's just infuriating. And so what did they do with your kids? What? Well, you- my, 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 I've got really good neighbors. They came over. My grandmother ended up finally getting over to the house and they all beat my wife home because uh, she was, you know, 30 minutes or so away. And so uh, luckily my, I have good neighbors and luckily my, my grandparents live relatively close and, and, and made it over. And then, you know, my brother saw it on the news because he actually uh, announced it my arrest before they even arrested me. So my brother was actually on the way because uh, he, he, he saw it on TV. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is, it's crazy. And here's the thing. It's so much bigger than just January 6th. Now I think that they were just seeing what they could get away with and nothing's happened. So they've done the same thing now to parents who speak out at school board meetings. They've done this to pro-life activists who stood outside of, you know, of abortion clinics. They right. did it to the guy who made memes on social media you know, five years ago when when Hillary Clinton or even longer than that now, when Hillary Clinton ran against President Trump in 2016, they just arrested this guy facing 10 years in prison for making memes on social media. This whole thing, we are truly being targeted by our own government. Conservatives in this country are. It's it's disgusting. It's appalling. And and the, even more frustrating is when you know all of this is where are the spineless jellyback rhinos in Congress who were elected to represent the American people. They're a bunch of cowards who have not done really next to nothing about this entire situation. I would consider this a crisis in our country right now. They Absolutely. should be the ones beating the drum on this. They should be the ones using their congrat Republicans have control of the House. They should be holding hearings. They should be using their powers to subpoena people, bring them in, investigate this, put a stop to it, defund them. All the all the spending originates in the House, but they continue to pass these CRs. They continue to give Joe Biden and the Democrats and the left all the funding that they want to continue persecuting President Trump and the everyday American people, all while they pat themselves on the back saying, oh, we compromised and kept our, 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 our government from shutting down. They're spineless, jellyback rhinos, a bunch of cowards who need to step up and actually do the job that they were elected to do, which is to represent conservatives and put a stop to this. But the sad part about it is people keep voting them back in. Yes, they do. Democrats and and rhinos, the people keep voting them back in. And so much with so much going on. Nobody, nobody in this country knows what they're, what they're, what we're supposed to do. I mean, I go to work every day. I'm a dispatcher at 911 and 
city councilman. I go to work every day and do my thing, but it's like, what, what's it coming to and how do we stop it? Well, everybody says, well, stop it at the ballot box. Yeah. Well, well, that, that, that's too far away. You know, I'm sitting here when uh, Hillary was running for president, I posted some very, uh, I thought appropriate, but strong memes. So I'm just waiting for them to come knocking on my door just any day now. So Derek, Derek, they very well could. That's the world we live in now. Roger and, and there's a, and there's nobody whatever. with the power to stop them, or they're afraid to. One of the two. Um, Roger Conley wants to know, Derek, what would your thoughts be on election integrity? Oh uh, well, hello, Roger. Glad you're watching, man. Uh, I told him earlier, you know, you got my full support and endorsement, brother. We need to get you in into office. We need more patriots like Roger in every level of office, from county dog catcher, catcher all the way up to president. Uh, election integrity. Look, I'm endorsed by Mike Lindell, the My Pillow guy. For people who don't maybe don't know who that is, and so you know, I believe that um, in in my if I have my way, we would get rid of the machines and we would move to one day uh, voting paper ballots counted by hand at the precinct level. That's what I would like to see happen. Uh, I know that it's going to be a, a long ways to get there, and, and this is what I tell people: even those on the left, they can disagree. They, you know, that they can say that you know they don't think that anything happened in 2020 or 2016 or whatever. That's okay. At the very least, I think that those on the left, if they're being honest, at the very least, they would have to agree that the trust in the process has been stolen from the American people. If all, and there's way more than this, but let's just say there's 25% of the people who believe that there's something, our, our elections are not secure. And, and, and that's the, the, the polling shows it's way more than that. There's it's yeah. probably closer to 50%, but let's just say 25% do not believe that our elections are secure. Well, that's, that's a major issue. That's a major problem. Democrats, Republicans, conservative, liberal, whatever, they should be coming together on this, on this very issue and saying, Hey, I'm not as you know as a left leaning leaning person. I'm not saying that anything has has happened, but I do want to work with the conservatives and secure our elections and get transparency and secure it to where people do get restore. We can restore the faith in the process, and I think that's what what's missing right now is 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 faith in the process because that that's been stolen from the American people. But see, I, if I, I if I have no faith in the process, then I'm not going to bother to vote. So I'm just exactly. wondering. I'm just wondering if that isn't precisely the tactic to keep conservatives from voting because they don't believe in the, in the system anymore. Not just voters. I've spoken to many pretty big donors across the country who they're not even donating to elections anymore. They said there's no point because the Republicans didn't do anything to secure our elections. And therefore I'm not wasting my money. I get told that. Wow. Pretty regularly. Is that right? Yeah. And I'm not talking to people who give $10, you know, I'm, I'm calling big donors who uh, one guy in particular gave over $50,000 in, in the 2020 election. And he's not giving a penny to anybody because he said it's not, he's not wasting his time and his money because the Republicans didn't secure our elections. Derek, where can we go? What can we do? I, I, because like I said, they keep voting the same people in Yeah, people who want to make a difference. They're like, Oh no, 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 no. And I, I believe that 2024 go? is the last stand. I'm not going to say it's the most important election in history. I hate it when people say that. I believe it's the final stand. I believe that they have used every tactic they know of in previous elections. We have made some progress, not as much as I would like, into securing some of these issues, like some of the the drop boxes have were have been deemed illegal in some of these states and the Zucker Bucks and you know a lot of the they've cleaned up some voter rolls. I mean, so they they've made some progress in that direction. I think that 2024, I think that we owe it to ourselves, we owe it to our families, we owe it to our founding fathers, we owe it to anyone who's ever served our country. We owe it to all of them to vote and and vote in such huge numbers in 2024 that even if there are some shenanigans that we can overcome that. We we outvoted the algorithm in 2016. That's how we ended up with President Trump to begin with. He wasn't ever supposed to become president, in my opinion. Right. Guess what? We did it again in 2020. Had we not voted it for President Trump in such large numbers in 2020, we never would have exposed all the corruption in there. It's not a coincidence that they just shut down the counting of votes in, in multiple swing states all on the same night, yeah. uh, and then everything, we all know what happened from there. That's not a coincidence. It's because we outvoted their algorithm. We outvoted all of that, and 
we we made them show their hand. We made them show their cards. And uh, there's been a lot of – Mike Lindell has spent hundreds of millions of dollars uh, fighting this battle, has made a lot of progress himself personally. He's an American patriot and uh, somebody I really respect and look up to. And so we owe it to people like that to vote in 2024 as if our country depends on it because it does. They kind of hammered Mike a whole lot, didn't they? Oh, he's lost – hundreds of millions of dollars, probably even closer to a billion dollars Mike Lindell has lost, all in the name of fighting to secure our elections. And he's still and he's and he's still going. And, and that's yes, you know is. that's that's what we need. And and we need we, we need people like you who are, you know, forward thinking, who sees through the smoke in the mirrors. And you know, I, I just don't know and I keep saying it, I, I just don't know what to do. I, you know, I, I get so frustrated and everybody keeps telling me, stop watching the news. Well, I can't because I want to see what's, I mean, right, right now, I told my wife last night, I, I may be off balance. I said, well, World War III started. And she said, what? And I flipped on the news and there we are. You know, I get it. They attacked us first. But, you know, that's, there's going to be major issues over there. I think that Biden wants that. I mean, historically, Americans do not change the leadership during a major war. And so I think that they're trying to do everything they can to try to prop up this, uh, what I call the, the illegitimate Biden regime. And so uh, you're not wrong. And um, I just think that um, if people want to quit voting, do it after 2024. We owe it to ourselves. We owe it to our children, our grandchildren, our founding fathers. We owe it to everybody who came before us to, to, to try to handle this peacefully and uh patriotically and we need to vote as if our country depends on it i'm a i'm running for wood county board of education like i said i'm a city i'm a city councilman right now for parkersburg and i 100 percent believe that the future of this country starts with our our children mm -hmm. and our children are being roadblocked so much stupid things that don't make a bit of sense instead of teaching them and rick and i talk about this all the time rick and i go to drink coffee and we're like all over this but teacher you know our kids need to be taught to take their place as leaders in this country mm -hmm. and they're not they're they're being they are being um uh, indoctrinated with all kinds of stuff you know and and i'm i'm really I'm upset about that because you know i always say you know you can take a rattlesnake and you can stick it in front of a six-year-old or seven-year-old and you can tell that rattle you can tell that six-year-old that's the best that is the best pet you can ever have in your entire life until they reach for it and it's too late to make the change you know what i mean and i keep telling i keep using that analogy because of everything that our kids are being that's being thrown at our kids um, the way that they're being indoctrinated the way that the, the, the um, younger gen the middle generation i would say because i was talking to a guy the other day we were talking about people not wanting to work and he said something profound to me and i said can i use that he said i don't care because I, I said how come how come we don't we can't find nobody can find people to work and he looked at me he said bob because these kids don't realize don't know that they're supposed to take care of themselves I went, oh, that makes sense. They don't they, let the government do it. They don't realize it's they have to do that on their own. Yeah. But, you know, T, do you have anything you, I'm sorry, T. I, I know you're sitting back there going, be quiet, Bob. And I apologize. But <laughs> this stuff infuriates me. And I, I just get, I just get moving on it. And I'm sorry. Go ahead, T. Well, else? the only other thing um, we were discussing, yeah, we were discussing um, at the ballot box. I was talking to Rick about this the other day. You know, um, you go to buy a beer, you're over 21. It doesn't matter your age anymore. You have to show a valid photo ID. You have to right. show a valid photo ID to buy cigarettes. <laughs> Why would you not have to show a valid photo ID to vote? Not only that, do you realize how racist it that? is to say it's so racist for the left to say that 
uh, uh, you know, requiring an ID is disenfranchising minority voters. You're, you're trying to tell me that black people are not capable of getting an ID of some sort like that. That is that is how racist that comment really is. They're basically saying that black people are incapable of getting a, an identification of some sort. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, we, we got to have voter ID. We got to secure these elections. And, Bob, I wanted to say thank you for running for the school board, man. We need more of that. Our children are being indoctrinated right now in our school system. But I'll tell you the scary part is that starting at the university level, these public universities are no longer out here trying to uh, educate people based on the merits. They are creating social justice warriors. They are, they are indoctrinating these young people to go into the classroom. And these young teachers have been convinced and they actually believe it's their role to, to overstep the parents and to step in and, 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 and give their opinion and uh, on these social issues, which is totally wrong to do so. And I believe that at the federal level, we need to uh, to basically uh, strike down these public universities. We need to put them in their place and say, hey, if you want to create social justice warriors, that's fine. But you're not receiving federal funding to do so. You're going to become a private university and then you can go do that. But if you're going to receive public tax dollars and you're going to be a public university or a public college, you're not pushing this uh, this left wing ideology. You want to get back to the basics, which is teaching you know, reading English, math, and preparing people for, for jobs within their profession. Right. And that's 100% correct. And, you know, the, the thing is that teachers nowadays are being put in so many different positions. Never should a parent be left out of the loop. You know what I mean? Yep. They, never, ever, ever. If, if a child my, my says, thing, Bob, my saying is I do not co-parent with the government and neither should you. There you go. And, and, and Rick, he's not a big, Rick's not a big uh, fan of public education anyway. And I've always said that the, that the federal department of education needs to go. Yes. That, and because the only thing we're doing and correct me if I'm wrong, we're paying them on the federal level to tell the state level to tell us what to do. Yep. And if you don't, you're not getting this hundred and fifty thousand dollars that you need. Yep. That's wrong. Get That's rid exactly how it works. Make, make it make it go away. Leave it to the states. The states know yeah. how to handle it. They don't know. I, I would bet you you could you could go talk to the federal department of education, and then people would be like, "I don't know what they do in West Virginia." Yeah. Of course not. Well, they, they, they would say, I'll tell you that they're pushing transgender issues or pushing this left wing ideology because that's that's what's required of them in order to receive their federal funding. So they, 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 they'll they be able to tell you that portion of it. It's absolutely ridiculous. And, and that's what I was saying earlier. You know, we got to abolish all these three letter agencies. They're unconstitutional. Uh, they're unelected bureaucrats who are running our country behind the scenes with, uh, you know, unlimited amount of terms, if you will. And uh, and that that would include the, the federal department of education and just give this power back to the states to where there's actual accountability and people can uh, hold hold these people accountable. You know, I, I was talking to I was talking to our guest last week, and I said, you know, what what these politicians have missed? They are citizens hired by citizens to represent citizens. Yeah. And somewhere along the line, they take it as I'm God. You do what I say because you put me here to tell you what to do. Yep. Totally missed the whole point there. And it, that's not how it works. And I, I the more, I, you know, the more I get into this politics stuff, the more and the more I listen to people and the more I talk to people like yourself, um, it, it just absolutely boggles the mind and, most Americans, you know, are elderly or suffering that they have to decide whether to pay rent and eat or get their $400 pill yeah. prescription medication. And the kids are like, what, what do we do? I mean, they're not allowed to have Christmas parties in the schools anymore because it offends people. They're not, they don't, I was told they don't have like, you know, but that's a different story. I'm sorry. We'll get on that later, but, but, you know, I, I'm sorry, Derek, you know, I've been looking forward. I honestly got to been looking forward to this since, since you said you'd come on. This has been, 
has been awesome. But I, I you know, I, I, I hope that everybody listening and listening, you know, on the, on YouTube and who listen later on the audio versions can can stop and think, who do we want sitting in Washington, D.C.? We want somebody who understands and who's been there and who who understands and sees through, like I said, the smoke and the mirrors that can sit there and make decisions for the people and not just because somebody in the leadership told them, this is how I want you to do this or else you're going to be blackballed from whatever it may be. So, you know, I, is there anything you'd like else you'd like to say to everybody or is there anything else you want to talk? It's your, you, you take it as long as you want. We, we go about an hour, but we, we went over it the other day, like big time, didn't we, Rick? Oh, yeah. Yep. Cause <laughs> it, it, we get so interested in it. It doesn't make a difference. We'll listen all night. That's okay. Well, tape, tape keeps rolling even after the hour goes by. <laughs> That's right. Well, I, I just want people to understand that, you know, we, we're in a battle for the future of this country right now and, and politicians got us in this mess and we need, I hope uh, we can encourage more patriots to get involved. Like I said, every level of office from, from County dog catcher all across this country, all the way up through president. We need, we need more America first patriots to run, step up and run for office. And, um, that that's that's the only way we're going to be able to have a chance of saving this country. I mean, it's going to be difficult to do so. I mean, that's we're in a we're in a very tough situation as a country right now, and um, you know, I've I've I'm, I'm still hopeful. Obviously, or I wouldn't be running for office. But uh, time's running out. It's time for people to get off the couch, get off the sidelines, and start getting involved. You know what? Something that keeps that goes through my head, and I, I tell I tell all the all my guests this, and Rick and I've discussed this. I can remember my grandfather telling me about Rick. Who'd you say that was? that said, we will take the United States without firing a shot. Yeah. Uh, Khrushchev. Khrushchev. I keep forgetting that guy's name. Yeah. We will Khrushchev. take, I think about that every time I see what's going on in this world, because you know, yep. our, our enemies are sitting back on. That's right. That's right. Keep going. Keep going. Yep. And, and it's frustrating. And, and we appreciate people like you who tell it like it is. I don't want anybody that's going to sit and say, well, you know, it's not so bad, you know, because we know better people. The American people are not stupid. Yeah. Contrary to what these people think, we're, we're not stupid. We see it. We live it. They don't cause they don't have to, they make more money than anybody that I'm aware of and they don't have to deal with that stuff. So it doesn't affect them. You know, but it affects us every time we get a paycheck and you got to sit and write the bills. It's like, bye bye. Yep. You know, it was fun while we had your pal. <laughs> so I want you, it's been a pleasure. And I'd love for you to come back when we had uh, to go back through a lot more. I'm telling you what, for what you went through and to step up and say, you know what? Well, let me show you what I'm going to do. Well, I tell everyone, Bob, this is not my campaign. It's it's truly not. This is a the campaign of the American people. This is the opportunity. If there's anyone out there who's ever, and I mean, if you've ever wanted to send a message to the deep state, to the swamp, you can do so by helping to elect uh, a January, former January 6th political prisoner into Congress. You're talking about shaking things up and sending shockwaves. That would. Uh, probably around the entire world. That's exactly that what would happen. So. How can we get a hold of you? How can people how Yeah, can people so reach especially. Out to you? So you can go to our website. It's evans4wv.com, evans4wv.com. You can head over there. Uh, look, if you're if you're someone in the district, especially, I mean, we're trying to focus on in the district right now in southern half of West Virginia. Uh, get on there and fill out that form. Uh, I'd be more than happy to come come meet with you. I mean, it, I've, I've had meetings as small as five and six people, and I've had meetings, you know, with uh, hundreds of people. I mean, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, but I'd be more than willing to come and chat with you guys in person and answer questions. Uh, you I'd can like donate that. if you want to. We've got we've had over five thousand donors at this point. It's absolutely amazing. Over five, we just recently crossed over five thousand, so we're over five thousand donors now. Uh, we've raised over $300,000. I'm endorsed by Mike Lindell, General Flynn, Veterans for Trump, Oil and Gas Workers Association, uh, Laura wow. Loomer, so many others. So, uh, But we actually out-fundraised our Rhino incumbent opponent in the, the fourth quarter of 2023. We out-fundraised her. So there's a lot of momentum behind this campaign right now. And uh, if you've ever wanted, like I said, send a message. 
this is the opportunity to do so. This is the campaign to do so. And uh, this is the time to hop on the wagon and, uh, and help us take this thing and get it across the finish line. So I'll tell you, I'll get with um, I'll get with Roger and some others and we'll set something up and bring you up. I'd, I'd love to meet you in person. Just to talk to you. You're you, yeah. you have an amazing you have an amazing story to tell. And thank you. People people need to hear it and people need to know the truth. Um, you know, a lot of these people who tell the truth that they're, they're, they're being silenced. Or, no, that's or they're being discredited or whatever. But not one person in the January 6th has been charged with insurrection, which Correct. is what they're charging Donald Trump with. Makes no sense. Makes no sense. So well, the whole we thing surrounding all of yeah. that was just to get after President Trump. That's that's their whole goal is to get after President Trump. That's it. They don't care. What? Myself and the others are just pawns who got caught in the crossfire in, in terms of their hatred against President Trump. All right. Hey, it's been a pleasure. It's been hey, great thank you guys for having me on. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys. And we, I, we'll get with you, and that way we can um, bring you up here to Parkersburg and have a great time and just sit and talk and, as we call it, chat with the, with the people. You know what I mean? Yeah, sounds like a plan. Derek, appreciate you, sir. Thank you, guys. Have a very wonderful evening, buddy. You too. Bye-bye. Well, that yeah, was interesting. Well, absolutely. I wonder how long it's going to take for the FBI to knock on our door. T, get under the bed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid, okay. Bob. <laughs> I'm F very frightened. <laughs> no, I'm not. What are they going to do? They, they, you know, what are they going to do? Take my birthday? Okay. I knocked on my desk and the dog was barking. Well, you know, they're coming to your house. I we just, well, we just have a few, a if few announcements. If they're coming to your house. It... Now, what will happen in the middle of the night, I'll hear helicopters, and I'll like, uh-oh. <laughs> oh, they're here. I'll go ahead and get dressed, honey. You hold my beer. Over a misdemeanor. <laughs> Over a misdemeanor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they brought him, they, they took him out. What they did is they waited, like like Lisa told me, they, they waited till his wife left and he was home alone with his kids and they told him that's exactly what they done yeah and that's just that's just nuts mm -hmm. what we got on the announcements there ricker yeah well, there's one my buddy roger you are invited to rogers conley's monthly town hall meeting come share your thoughts on how we can make wood county better thursday february 8 2024 6 30 to 8 30 p.m washington bottom community building if most of you don't know where that's at it's right just go down into um, past DuPont. It's on the left-hand side. Um, special guest candidates, Tricia Jackson, candidate for West Virginia State Auditor, which we're going to try very hard which to get to get on the Bobcast because, I mean, there's um, some of these people that, you know, we've been trying. It's just hard to get a hold of them. So don't forget that February, Thursday, February 8, 2024, 638, 30 Washington County Community Buddy. Come down, talk to Roger. Tell him your concerns. Tell him what you what you want want to see him do as a county commissioner he is a man of integrity and a man who will listen to everything you say and i i'm just glad to call him my friend i really am and uh so there's that one rick next one sir ah wood county prevention coalition this is a cool one it's going to have a bullying bash to strike out drugs february 10th saturday february 10th Registration is 12:30. Bowling one to three. Free pizza, drinks, and T-shirt at Pike Street Lanes, 2605 Pike Street, Parkersburg. Four to six bowlers per lane. Limited two adults per lane. A team consists of four to six bowlers for either an elementary, middle, or high school team. Trophies and medals for elementary, middle, and high school teams will be given. Trophies for over a high bowler. It's a free event. Go down, take your kids, have fun, get out with the kids enjoy time with them because trust me my two girls grew up right before right before i knew it and now my granddaughters are growing up one's going to be a teacher one's getting ready to graduate she's going to be a forensic scientist and one's going to be a communications major i don't even know where the time went but i give up next one rick <laughs> oh here's a fun this here's right up t's alley Elizabeth Work Volunteer Fire Department's annual Bake Steak Dinner is February 11, 2024. That's on Sunday. 
11 a to 3 p.m. or until sold out. So come early, yes, bring sir. them to lunch. And it's going. They're going to have delicious baked steak. Mm, I, I think I'll be there. Creamy mashed potatoes and gravy, green beans, a dessert. Going and out there and <laughs> fetch us some vittles. Going out there and eat baked steak with Stephen Settle and Brian Garrett. They'll fix you right up. Ooh. <laughs> what do you think, Rick? One go. Oh, it sounds good to me. Uh, Amanda and I are off. We'll just get. We'll just get. In the, we'll just get in the pickup truck. Come on out and fetch up. That's all right. Can I ride in the back? No, your hair oh, will shoot. Your hair will get messed up, Mister. <laughs> oh, where? Right. Is that all we have, or is there any more? Oh, we got a couple more here. Oh, yay! Oh, you are invited to a spaghetti dinner fundraiser hosted by the award-winning Yo-Yo Elite Twirlers. Saturday, February seventeenth, five to eight p.m. at the Lubeck Civic Center. If you don't know where that's at, you go down 68. It goes off to Lubeck Road, and it's on the left-hand side. Dinner includes spaghetti, garlic bread, side salad, drink, and dessert. Adults $12, seniors $10. That'd be me. Kids $8 and under three free. They're going to have raffle baskets and everything like that. And they're going to have uh, all proceeds go directly to the team for competition expensive, which is very expensive for these young girls. I don't know if you've ever got to see them. My granddaughter is a coach. And she was also a part of Yo-Yo Elite for many years. These kids give everything they have for competition. And I, I'm proud to watch them. They're just great kids. So come on out. Come on out and um, support them. Saturday, February 17th, 5 day at Lubeck Civic Center. And come out and watch what they do. Now, this is something that... Um, it's the Veterans Table feeding program. Wood County Veterans Table will occur on the third Tuesday of each month. And the, the dates are on the bottom. If you need them, that'll be on the website. 7, 6, 7, 15, 16 Street, Parkersburg, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Come down, support the veterans. And uh, you can, there's the website on the, on the bottom, www.mountaineerfoodbank.org slash veterans table to see the complete schedule. Come out and support the veterans and you know, sit and talk with them. They have a big story to tell, and I'm sure they would love to sit and talk to them. So anything else, Mr. Rick? Yeah, uh, you might want to talk talk about the two new oh, websites. Okay. The pages that we have on Facebook. Let me get comfortable here. This, there I'm you gonna go. Get, I'm going to have to get me a new settle, office. Settle, settle in there. I'm going to have to go steal a new office chair out of a new <laughs> office building somewhere. <laughs> I don't like this thing. Well, anyway, most of you know that uh, I'm bring, trying to bring back the Soapbox Derby to the Berg. And I have a lot of support. A lot of people want to see it happen. It's a major undertaking, but I have a, I have a committee. I'm looking for more people who want to be on it, who have ideas to help out. Rick and I started a Parkersburg Soapbox Derby site on Facebook. And go on there, and that will be... We will keep you updated on everything we're doing. The it, the race culminates in July when we go to whoever wins goes to national up in Akron, which would be exciting. So a lot of people are very excited about this. I'm trying very hard to make it happen. If you're interested in volunteering to help me um, on the for, with anything as far as um, being on the committee or as far as what to volunteer during the you know during race week and the race. Let me know. Uh, we're going to have a Miss Soapbox Derby pageant. We're going to have race week where people, you know, vendors sell stuff. We're going to, uh, we're going to, um, what's the word I want? We're going to put the cars on exhibit. And so everybody can see how hard the kids have, and their parents have worked together. And that's the whole thing, folks. This, this, I, I really want this to happen. I want to bring folks together parents and their children together, work on a car, race the car, root your child on. And it's going to be great. The second page we started today, I actually just started a few hours ago. Rick's one of them guys. If I say, Hey Rick, I need a page on back to Berg is what the page is. I said, I really need a page on back to back to the Berg. And what is back to the Berg? Back to the Berg is what I would love to see come back to the city of Parkersburg. Different things for kids, teenagers, adults to do. 
And it's going to be a place where you can go on and say, hey, Bob, how about this idea? We will, you know, it's all on Facebook. Again, it's called Back Back to the Berg, B-U-R-G. And Rick had that done in 20 minutes, if that, if that. And he said, what do you think? And I'm, as always, it's more than I expect because Rick doesn't just say, eh, that's good enough. Rick's never done that to me. Rick's always said, no, if we're going to do it, it's going to look good. So if T, do you have anything you'd like to say? I mean, is there, before we leave, I mean, how, how have you been? You've been working hard or. Um, oh yeah. I, I, well, I've been off work for a little bit now, just medical leave, but you know, <laughs> that's another yeah. thing. But you know, the only thing that I would like to say this evening is as normal as Bob and Rick and I, we support the Humane Society. We all do. Um, yeah. They always constantly need your help. They need help with adoptions, have your pets spayed or neutered. But also this time of year, if uh, you notice, food banks are struggling people. All of them are. Not just one, not just a few. All of them are struggling. It's because the people around us are struggling to put food on the table. You cannot have a minimum wage job now and two uh, people in the household working and still put food on the table for your family. So these food banks are struggling. And uh, if anybody has time, you know, I'm not supporting anyone in particular. I'm just saying, you know, they're, they're all struggling. And if you can support your local food bank. Right. Exactly. And, you know, uh, what she was talking about to humane society, they need blankets, they need food, they need um, puppy pads. They need, you know, I, I think Rick and T we need to have a Bobcast food drive for the food banks and also for the humane society. I think we could do them in two separate maybe do live live from there what yeah, do you we'll think see. maybe we'll we might be we'll able see to see set if we can that make up. it happen we'll see but I, I agree with you t folks you know people need coats people need clothes people need a place to help your neighbor you know i mean we we've got to you know we got to take care of each other because nobody else is going to do it with that, we're going to close the Bobcast. I want to tell you all, we appreciate you being here. Derek, what an amazing person for going through what he went through and his children going through what they went through. How traumatic. And I don't care if it ticks people off the left. I don't care. You don't treat American people that way. You have people who are here illegally who are in five-star five star hotels. Of course, there are some people that say, no, Bob, you're lying. You're lying. Okay. I'll leave it alone then. But at the same time, our America first, veterans first. We have veterans on the streets. Get them off the streets, people. Next week, we'll have Mr. J.J. Hendershot. James is running for District 3, Parksburg City Council. Um, he'll be on to tell us what he would like to see happen with the city of Parkersburg. We have multiple guests throughout the month. Well, March coming up, we have guests. And I think we're up until April. And once we get through April, we're we'll probably we've got a lot of work to do with the soapbox derby. So we're, you know, we're just going to do as we we're going to get people on here who we can get on here and talk to them. Uh, we got off of it a little bit as far as the MOV goes, but this is all about what's going on here, folks, and what affects you. So if you have any questions, any concerns, any comments, you know where we're at. We're right here. Yeah, Nothing's and, and just. In all fairness, one of the reasons we, we backed off the local issues is because, as Derek was saying, I believe if we lose this election, it'll be the last election in the United States. Yeah. It's that important. And if you don't believe that, I'm sorry. I mean, that's just the way we feel. You know, I, I get hammered all the time. I say something, you know, but that's the, that's how I feel because I see it every day. I see the families and I see, I see the family struggle. The kids are being thrown roadblocks. No, no. Teachers are being disrespected. No, 
that my mom my mom would have jerked me out of that classroom by herself they wouldn't have had to call her she'd have you know so with that being said we'll see you next week 6 30 with mr james hendershot uh candidate for parkburg city council district three have your questions ready it's always a pleasure guys rick t yes, thank sir. You so much for being on here yep. have he, your people call my people t always does her homework and has questions so that's amazing that works for me because <laughs> you know so we'll see you guys next week we love you guys very much family and friends take care if you need anything you know where we're at night rick night t Good night. and don't forget that baked steak and that spaghetti oh steak and spaghetti all right see you guys this has